All right, let's start up by saying Barak Tayahu, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Ha Kodash. Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is simply The Hidden Hand. And um, the reason why I had wanted to go into this hidden hand is because um, I had ran across a picture of a particular individual, which I'm going to show you in a minute to show you that everything that Jake does pretty much is, you know, they follow Esau. <clears throat> so what I want to do is I want to read these two precepts and then show you something real quick. This is Second Corinthians 2 and 11. It says, least Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. And that's why, you know, we look into certain things that, you know, impact, you know, the way our people think you know, and uh, influence their decisions on, uh, you know, whatever philosophy or whatever the case be of what they're getting into. So that's why we're not ignorant of Satan's devices and also Ecclesiastes 5.15, be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or, sm or a small, you know, and this is important what I'm about to show you because this is something that, that greatly influences Jake, you know, because you have a lot of Israelites out there that are, heavily steeped you know and now it's dying down but they heavily still heavily steeped certain ones of them into egyptology now what i have here is a masonic term called the secret hand and if you can see this individual uh he has his hand inside of his jacket or shirt or whatever the case is this is an actual masonic symbol to let the outsiders know you know that you're on the inside, you know, there's many ways you stand and hold your hands in certain you know, ways to let the people in the know know that you are a part of them, right? So I just want to read a little bit of this, the secret of hidden of the hidden hand. Uh, New Year, New Revelation, we had already told you about the code of hands of secret societies. Now we want to bring attention to the hidden hand. The hidden hand is a Masonic recognition signal and encompasses those who have reached the Royal Arch degree, the 13th degree of the Scottish Rite on the, or the 7th degree in the York Rite, also known as uh, Mason of the Secret. The meaning of the hidden hand, like many other signs of this type, it goes easily unnoticed unless the person who does it is not a full-blown Mason, as it was in the case of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart or, or Napoleon Bonaparte. You know, you can see they both have their hands, even though this is, you know, uh, Mozart was a Jake, you know, but you still see them, you know, with the uh, hand inside of their jacket, vest, or whatever the case is. In Freemasonry, up to the degree uh, prior to the Royal Arch, affiliates are called confer conferes. From the degree on, on, from that degree on, they are called companions and begin begin to have access to the exhaustive explanations on the mystery of the Masonic order to which they uh, they uh, they belong, including the real name of God that would be Jobalum, which is a comb uh, combination of three different names um, that they put in there. It says, illustrious Mason, Masons pose. The surprising thing is how often illustrious men in the past have had their portrait or more recently photographed uh, posing with their hidden hand in plain sight. And you can see here Karl Marx, uh, Joseph Stalin, and I'm not sure who this individual is, you know, you know, just to show you a few, you know, and, you know, I put this in the description box. So if brothers want, they could uh, actually, you know, check it out afterwards. It's no, no, no big deal, but it's just something that I wanted to show you because this is a Masonic uh, gesture when you see something happen like that. And the main reason why I went to this is because the father of Egyptology, John Francois Champollion, he has the hidden hand, you know, as you can see there in this portrait, you know, you can see that his hand is inside of his, you know, coat jacket or vest, you know, and this is the man that they, that Jake, well, Jake don't even know. They just say they're Egyptologists, but this is the man that is accredited with being the father, John Francois Champollion, the father of Egyptology. Now, when you read through here, right, it says uh, also in the Champollion, there whatever 
uh, was a French so uh, scholar, philologist, and orientalist known primarily as a decipherer of Egyptian hieroglyphics and a founding figure in the field of Egyptology. A child prodigy in philology, he gave his first public paper on the decipherment of Demotic, which was the, the uh, common language of Egypt in 1806, and already as a young man held many posts of honor in scientific uh, circles and spoke Coptic or Arabic fluently during the 19th century. French culture, during the 19th century, French culture, French culture, these Edomites in France, experienced a period, a period of Egypt, Egyptomania brought on by Napoleon's discoveries in Egypt during the campaign there, 1798 to 1801. So that led for the French culture experience to, uh, to experience a period of what's called Egyptomania. Egyptomania was the renewed interest of Europeans in ancient Egypt during the 19th century as a result of Napoleon's uh, Egyptian campaign, 1798 to 1801, and in particular as a result of the extensive scientific study of ancient Egyptian remains and culture inspired by this campaign. So pretty much the, um, the Jakes that are into uh, Egyptology, you know, in the uh, black unconscious community, as we call call it, you know, they were influenced by Esau, you know, so everything they know about Egypt, they got from Esau, from the language to the culture to everything that you see, you know, so that, and that's the reason why they, they're, they're lost, because they're following behind a, a man, why do you think they're not, they're not why do you think uh, Volcat Malone is not going after the Egyptologists, because they know that that's bullshit. So they letting Jake be. So if, if it was a case with us, you know, uh, not knowing what the hell we're talking about, that we're not the Israelites, why are they trying so vehemently to try to stop this? When the scriptures say that if this work be of men, it will come to naught, but if it be of the most high, you not you won't be able to fight against it. You know, there's a reason behind it. So pretty much when Jake gets into Egyptology or any type of Africanism, Pan-Africanism or whatever the case is, this is who you're paying homage to. Esau. And this individual who was credited with being the father of Egyptology, he was nothing but a Mason, the hidden hand of Freemasonry, you know, as we read here, you know. So what was the motive behind Esau pushing this stuff, this Egyptomania, you know, and that he's the one that's accredited with uh, deciphering the Rosetta Stone which was a three three languages, you know, in the Rosetta Stone in Egypt. So, so what you know? So why are, uh, are these Jakes so enthralled with this Egyptology uh, crap when that was pretty much started by the so-called white men, the Edomites? You know, just show you that Jake is lost. So I just wanted to show that because, like I said, I've seen this picture before, but it never hit me like that. And then uh, last week I saw it again. And I said, you know what? I was trying to look up some information on the hidden hand, but I couldn't think of the name of that particular gesture. So I left it alone. And then this morning when I got up, thought that came to mind was the hidden hand. So I said, you know what? Let me type that in. And this is what popped up, you know, gave you examples of prominent figures, you know, that were down with the Illuminati. Because, you know, this dev devil definitely, and all of these devils, you know, uh, had the same... Uh, particular uh, hand gesture, you know, and that's not by accident. He just didn't happen to be reaching for his uh, handkerchief to blow his nose, you know, or to get his passport out. You know, this is all done on purpose. And this guy was a, was a Mason. You know, he died at the age of 41 of a stroke, you know. So just something quick I wanted to get into. Uh, Lord's will, it was edifying. Until the next time I say shalom.